And it came to pass that a great pestilence descended upon the ancient city of Melbourne, and none of its inhabitants were untouched. And some were heard to cry out in strange tongues. And every seven days, the young men of the city would meet in combat. And each Thursday, three wise men would sit in judgment. And the wise men were John, Robert, and Louis. And their judgment was delivered in league teams. Hello and welcome to a very special Thursday night edition of the 1960 Grand Final League Teams. And of course, I have these two great compatriots of mine, one the genius of league football, the absolute wonder of the world, Mr Jack Dyer, otherwise known as Captain Blood. Hello. How are you, Jack? I'm very well indeed, Bobby. And nice of course, to be on the other side, Lewis Thomas Charles Richards. Parentage quite unknown. Thank you very much, Bob. And I'll tell you what, you haven't changed a bit uh, since 1967. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the girl yes. in the makeup room had to put ageing, ageing makeup on me. Not like you two. You had to be no. made younger. I had to get some ageing to now, go listen, with you. You Bob? haven't worked since. Haven't worked. <laughs> haven't I've worked. been working here since 1958. Are you still a purveyor of foreign automobiles? Oh, certainly. Yes. Now, listen, Bob. Do you about the Chinese guy that went to the doctors, the eye doctor? No. For an examination, and the uh, Chinese, the doctor said to the uh, Chinese guy, he said, "You got a cataract," and the Chinese guy said, "No, have you said, no, I haven't. He said, I got a rig kind of rental." <laughs> Uh, He's out of the he game, Jack. He improved, I'll tell you. He hasn't improved at all. <laughs> Just the same. Uh, it must be funny the floor manager laughed that time. <laughs> the first time he's laughed for 16 years since he's been down here. <laughs> we're, we're going to go back, Jack, and look at the marvellous teams of the 60s and see the grand finals. There's been some good ones, John. Good ones. When was the first grand final that you ever saw? I suppose it's the one that you played in, Jack. No, right? not in no, no. The one I climbed the fence. I climbed the fence at the MCG. You we climbed the fence at the MCG? Yeah. They have a fence around No, it, it was a 14, 14, 14 footer. Oh, yeah, threw the rope over, tied it up and over. Threw the rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the truth. I'm telling yeah. you, that's the truth. Did you have knots on And there was five behind me, two to come. Threw a rope and, over. A uh, rope and they tied it over the grandstand. Oh, of course, it's not like it is now. You the wooden go grandstand there. Yeah, there was something there. Did you get into the members, Jack? Yeah, and I also saw the interstate game getting over the fence too. One when Rudolph, I got over, climbed over the fence what to see year Rudolph. Was this? R Rudolph Valentino. Yeah. One of the, the red greatest red footballers the game ever seen. Ever seen. Could run what like a deer. Jack? Could march like a deer. What Beautiful. year? Oh, about 1930, because I went to Richmond in 31. The next year. Yeah. Didn't you, when, did, when did the first grand final you played in? 31. What age were you when you threw the rope over the fence? <laughs> 17. I was, going to, I was going to say, Ignatius, there's a few behind me too. <laughs> you must have been a delinquent, were you? Oh, well, 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 what about you? We had what, no what money, was the first we grand no money. Just a minute, Jack. Probably. What was the first grand final that you ever saw? I never went to grand finals in those days because I couldn't get a free ticket, truly. <laughs> <laughs> but you must have gone That's why I Well, uh, I did go once. I think it was about 1939 when uh, they played Geelong, and which is still classed as the greatest... No, that was 1937. 37. That was the one I went to well. Oh, at And that was classed as the greatest full grand final of all time. Yes. And, of course, we go to the football now with Edna, and we sit in the out all the time with Edna with a diamond tiara on. <laughs> well, look, I think it might be a nice thing if we... Uh, were to, well, what? I've lost my place, to be truthful. <laughs> 1977 league team, when we were really at our peak, I suppose you could say, Jack, were we? Well, I would say so. This is 67 I've got here. No, now. this is 1977. <laughs> oh, God, Some of the now. league teams that we used to do, oh, Jack. God. Oh, well. We're we, showing a flashback, we Jack. How long were we here, though, Bob? Well, we were here for... Well, 23 years or something, I think. <laughs> yeah, but we're, Jack, we're showing a flashback here. Of, of oh. what you were like when you were younger. Yeah, and and what we used to do. Jack should know about... He should know a bit about flashing and flashbacks. So. Hey, that's enough. That never, don't ever say that about Jack. Here we are in 1977. Oh, Joe, this is a... I'm coming the wrong way here. What? Hey, golly, this is a super show, isn't it, old oh, man? 
Is this a lovely restaurant? It is. It looks What's like it. It's a breakfast at Docker Street. That's uh, just absolutely marvellous. Oh, <laughs> well, John, would you like a champagne? Oh, lovely. Would you like a touch of champagne? Oh, lovely. thank you. Yes, we'll love one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's a heavy bottle. Oh, it's cute. Oh, no. oh, watch all the teams, will you please? Sorry. Oh. <laughs> There's yours, Bob. Uh... Oh. <laughs> yes, will you just move away from the table, please? It's the Piggy Wiggy Award. This is uh, very nice. That was your, that? Uh, As a matter of fact, these are your awards that you have to give out. So it's don't all worry about that. Rather nice here tonight. Isn't it marvellous what can happen on league teams? Especially yes. on Grand Final. We'd like to thank Brian and uh, Lady Pauline over at uh, Cornerhead Foot Street for supplying the booze tonight. My it's word, it's very nice. And here's cheers. And here's yeah, cheerio, John. John. To everyone that's viewing To everyone, that's actually. correct. Hey, hey someone's wet my seat here, look. We have certainly, Jack. Mm. God bless. Stick your finger out, Jack. Put it to the side, <laughs> will you? <laughs> It's a big sort of a finger you've got, too. <laughs> well, as you can see there, we were all dressed exclusively Good. by Charles Lux, Charles Lux, Charles listen. Lux. Listen. Charles Lux, who happened to be out <laughs> in Turak Road. <laughs> listen, in case you'll get you the sack. <laughs> now, listen, why were you wearing a blue shirt we were all wearing well, white shirts? I was his favourite, the Charles Lux. <laughs> oh, so you yes. must have been getting a bit on the side there. <laughs> and my hair was done by Kerry McFarlane who used to be in the back. Oh, mine was done by Ed the Riches. Oh. <laughs> anyway, look, let's get to the teams of the 1967 grand final between Geelong and Richmond. And, Jack, we're yes. going to give you Richmond. Richmond, thank you very much indeed. I'll go ahead with it now. You can go ahead. It'll right, come up you. there and you can just run through the teams. Oh, ding, Swift Jewel. Now, there's a back line. If kick it a mile, that Swifty fellow there. Jewel, what a beautiful... Rough, tough footballer he was too at the same time. And Dean, what a silent, the Dean. Sane, silent man he was. He just did his job he and went home. He got a reporter. Yes, he did. Don't start that business. I'd what? like you did enough when he got up that time. You only got him rubbed out. <laughs> Bergen, Perry and also Strang. There's, there's a, Perry might have been the weakest of that one, but he did a good job, that fellow, at that stage. And Strang, he was a good footballer. Good, they relations good of kicks. the great Strangs. My word, they are. He's the uh, nephew of that fellow there. And John Perry. And good, John, if you're listening in too, or uh, viewing it, or whatever it is, John, up there at uh, Aubrey, good luck to you, son. He's <laughs> in a uh, lovely pub up there. I'll say yes. He's oh, so. uh, in a rest home now. <laughs> <laughs> back with the teams. Right, now. back to the teams. Well, Ronaldson What about the centre line, Jack? Now, wait a minute. There was... There was uh, Ronaldson uh, was brought to the side because uh, there was a yeah. Neville Crow got suspended yeah. for uh, hitting someone. I, don't I think you better read out the team. All right, then I'll, we'll get back. Yeah. I, was, I was back in Clay, wasn't I? Yes, Clay. Dick Clay. From yeah. anywhere from the centre line, he could kick a goal. Right, Barrett, how was he running passing? Don't tell me he's any better than those fellas, Bob, will you? Billy Burkey, is that even better than Burkey? Anywhere you've seen along the line somewhere at all? Oh. No. Uh, nor the half forward, the swooper. Yes, a uh, he used to sweep too. He loved a little drop. Um, uh, <laughs> good, <laughs> good, 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 big Patty. He, he, if he could turn it on, he could turn it on. But Is he the he, only fellow that used to go into the rooms before the game, unscrew his head, take his brains out, put it in his locker, I, screw his head I back on again? Oh, he was he right, got very, He got very nasty oh, late. Was he? So be careful. Oh. Barry Richardson, yeah, big <laughs> Barry there, always had a bit of trouble with his knees, but he was a very good football player. Joe's had a good side. I don't suppose you've and seen Don worse knees Rollison than Barry got in that Richardson, side because the, one of our players, um, Neville Rowe, he hit uh, Big Nickel. Well, it wasn't his caper, you know. Neville Crow. Neville Crow, it wasn't his caper He at got all. out suspended. Yeah, and he got two weeks over it in the right. finish. Yeah. Go through the Rucks, end of it. Patterson. A yeah. bit, uh, you're a little bit mad. Uh, a. Richardson. Well, yeah. That's the bull. That's the bull. You're the father of the boy that's down there now. Yeah. And uh, 400 miles I went to sign him up, you know. 400 miles. Uh, went yeah. to sleep what about the road? I nearly arrived here. And Bartlett, of course. How many? Look, I'm crook on him because he, he broke my record. He not only broke it, he smashed it and put it away. And he gave two handballs, you know, in his career. The, the training one. And Green and Perry. <laughs> both good footballers. Good on you, John. Well, there we are. Now, I think we'll go and have a look at the Geelong team. And Lewis, you have the privilege of looking at that team. It's going to come it's up. coming up there, but I thought you'd make a remark of what I'm doing here in front of you. Look, can you see what I'm doing? 
Where'd you get those glasses? They're Edna's. Who, Dame Edna? <laughs> no. I lost mine at the market, so I borrowed Edna's and I can see better with Edna's than I could with my own. So that's why I've got these. And they're rather they're setting a new trend. You're not, as a you haven't fact. changed or anything like that, have you, with them oh, glasses? Yeah. Well, you don't know these days, do you? <laughs> you can you see know. anything? Well, let's have a look at the Geelong side, yeah. Merv. There's the Geelong team, and that's a fa that West's a very good player. But let me say this first of all, that Dennis Marshall showed no signs of his ankle worries. Now, yeah. he's fit to play, and of course, we all know how great a player that Dennis is, and he's probably one of the second best players to come out of Western Australia, or third best, probably Polly Farmer, Barry Cable, then uh, Dennis Marshall. They're all great players. But there's Polinelli, Kloster and Newland, a great centre line, and of course, the great Polly Farmer playing in the ruck. And I don't think there's ever been a ruckman as good as him, except back in the early 30s and the late 30s with Jack Dyer. But we see Farmer, Ryan and Goggin. And what a great player Billy Goggin was too. But there's the, the, the Geelong lineup, and they're going to be mighty hard to beat. Well, we'll pick up some of the game a fair way into the, third, into the last quarter, I think we'll have it. Well, let's turn up with me. Yes, is that all right with you? That's OK because with me. Because a very marvellous game... Probably one of the great grand finals of Listen, all time. Listen, can I ask you a question before you throw to the game? Yes, what is it? Why, it, uh, why do Catholics have bigger balls than Protestants? <laughs> they sell more tickets. <laughs> <laughs> He's using it all the time. Could we have the game, please? <laughs> Help of the flank on the outer side. Here's a go for Polinelli. Polinelli picks up. He tries the long one. And what a magnificent game. And, of course, Jack, I think that sweaty, pretty swift definitely marked it behind the line. You didn't mark it behind the line. Don't start that. You look for excuses. If that's what's wrong with your line. They're always looking for excuses uh, down there. Well, I'll say this. Wrong. I tipped you along to win, too. It's another mistake I made. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, you the quarter-by-quarter quarter scores, we've just seen those. The poster, there it is up there. The premier, Jack, look around to oh, your right over there. there. Look, how is that? We what a power. poster. Well, they were a power in football then. And what Ooh. a great coach Tommy Hapey was. Yeah, He's the best coach, coach Richmond's ever Ooh, had. Like Jack was a great coach. Well, Not as good as uh, Tommy Hapey on the only, record. Only coached for about four years or something, didn't he? He got, he got four premierships with Richmond. Four? Tommy Hapey? He's a genius. Well, I know his wife too, Maureen. She's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> and I want to send a cheery oh, out to Mrs can. Yabby too. She, they're not in the finals, but... God bless you, Mrs. Yabby. You're carrying that uh, nitwit of a husband as a coach for you, and uh, I hope you keep on helping him because he's got no hope if you don't. Well, we're going even further back now. Where to? 1961. And mm. that was a magnificent game, of course. Hawthorne and Footscray. Well, and here you are. Well, Footscray. yeah, Hawthorne, Footscray, Jack. What Footscray. about that? Yeah, Been about a bit that. of time. 3,000 were there the night to see them. The final training. 3,000 people. Yeah, this, was this it. vintage football? Oh, it was beautiful football. They had some terrific footballers. To, to win premierships, you've got to have them, Bob. And they had plenty on their side at that stage. Uh, Witten, of course, was, a, was going to be out with a Bruce Thigh, I heard in the finish. A, a Bruce Thigh? Teddy Witten? Yeah, he's come through. A Bruce Thigh. He generally played with a bruised nose, didn't he? What, just a minute. What about, what about nowadays with that, uh, what's his name? Hawkins trying to usurp his record. Who? Oh, well, Dougie Hawkins. He's played about three minutes in ten games, hasn't he? <laughs> God. <laughs> We're going to have a look at I must at some... say this before we go any further. Bob, just the same. It's oh. much harder to play 300 games today than it was in your day. There's more Why? pressure on the players today. They've got all the money worries and all that sort of business. <laughs> no, but well, if you had all no, that worry, you'd be <laughs> off your head. Jack, How would you like to be getting uh, 150000 a year and playing 300 games? It's shocking. I think it's just too. It's awful. I, I dream about that now. We used to get 30 bob. No. <laughs> you weren't worth it I either. remember you telling me, Jack, you got three pounds and fed all Lennox Street. Oh, not all Lennox Street. I was down. I lived down the other way. There was other footballers feeding a bit up this way and feeding down there. Oh. We mixed those days. He mixed the lovely in the town. Toppy part of Richmond, Docker Street. Docker Street. Did he? Yeah. Just Let's down. have a look at some great vintage league teams. Okay, we'll be going to commercial now. Then we'll be certainly coming back and looking at the league teams. And while we're going up Listen, now... Listen, Jack, uh, would you like to come across and have a tiddly with the CIG uh, mini chiller oh, over there? I chiller, would. I should say. Oh, oh you are? I said mini chiller. <laughs> Jack, watch, watch your mic there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, We're like... just going around here very slowly. Now, just take your time. I'll just pop you well, over I'm here, John. I'm turning the back on you, but I lost my mic. Yes, yeah, <laughs> good. Right yeah, we're right. Don't Which worry. Uh, Jack, and I'll, I'll have a couple of glasses <laughs> here. Ah... 
Jack, can I persuade you to put your fist right around this? This must be the first time you've ever shouted for me, Lou. In fact, gee, it's cold. Well, so it should be. It's draft beer straight from the famous CIG Maxi Chill portable beer cooler, Jack. Great looking unit. And a great performer, too. Like you used to be, Jack. The CIG Maxi Chill Beer Cooler is just the unit for hotels, sporting clubs, banquet rooms, any place where draft beer is wanted, wanted instantly, and wanted cold. The beer in this keg's warm, Lou. That's right. The CIG Maxi Chill puts an end to cooling your keg. You roll it at room temperature, hook them up to the Maxi Chill, and you've got a long cold beer quicker than you can say my shit. Here, have another one. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Oh, this is lovely. Get your establishment on a cold draft beer now with the portable Maxi Chill beer cooler from CIG. Give the boys at CIG a call on 440251 during office hours. CIG Maxi Chill. Draft beer leaves it cold. I'll tell you, well, you... it's the longest ad I've ever seen. He finished up our plot. We drank about 12 <laughs> beers, didn't you? You got a lifetime supply. <laughs> of those products and you're still going at it, And Jack. I tell you, I did that you commercial for nothing, too. I used to drink Do you hear what he said, Jack? Of... What you did, he did that commercial for nothing. <laughs> oh, he must have slept for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, we're going back to 1961 oh. in Lewis. Yes, this I is the I think you have to look after the Hawthorne Well, this is the Hawthorne team. team. Let's put it on the board. And, of course, John Kennedy, the great John Kennedy, one of the greatest coaches of all time, is going for his first flag. His first flag, and uh, incidentally, we won't tell you the result of that because I don't think anyone knows, but we will tell you later on. <laughs> and, of course, into the side is Cunningham for his sixth game, and he's a rover, five foot eight. And, of course, out of the side is Kevin Connell with a, uh, Kevin Connell with a cartilage in a injury. A cartilage injury? Listen, Stephen Phillips, you know, yeah. your one-time... Mentor. Mentor. Yeah. He went in the other day, was walking <laughs> ten minutes after he had it done. That's like, something I played in the grand final with a broken leg and kicked six goals. And it had Mercura came on, the bone that was poking out, <laughs> so you wouldn't give people tetanus. I know. What did I have? But Mer Mercura Caro. Mercura Caro. You wouldn't know. They used to call it iodine, Jack. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> well, Jack, he, Jack used to drink the iodine down in Richmond. <laughs> Just a, a, a big news about this game, of course, yes. is that Channel Seven are going to replay. The whole match. And I'll give you And some guess who the commentators were? Mike Williamson. Yes. Reg Hickey. Yes. And the one and only Jeff Raymond. What's happened to you? Where were you working? No, at I that wasn't stage? working. I was working at DB. And if, you, if you're a smart aleck, <laughs> you look here and you see you and I were calling the football. Now, that's Ron Casey. Ron Casey, you, you dummy. <laughs> we used to call a lot of football at 3DB. About three and a half minutes we got that 16 race for What about Jack? Game. Jack's going to give us the Footscray team, and I believe Witten's in doubt, Jack. Yeah, I, well, he was, uh, they said uh, overnight. I hope he wasn't. Well, he's, he's uh, actually had a bruised thigh. <laughs> Jack, I think he played, mate. <laughs> yeah, he did play in the finish. Well, well, he declared he himself fit. fit yeah. Well, Evans, Lee and Weir. <laughs> that Normie? Yeah. No, that's yeah. not Normie, no. Weir. It's his son. <laughs> Gillard, Boyles and D.E. If he'd have been playing, then he'd be 97. <laughs> Brian Spike going Gardner. Yeah. Hey, I'm Barry bad. Ian. See Barry Ian on there, Jack. He's a, it was a radio... Uh, very a big. ...breakfast man announcer. Yeah, very fantastic very, in Adelaide. Yeah, Come on. One. Ian, I don't know much about him at all. He was a ring in too. Um, Quarrel, he was a well, he was a half-forward flanker, but uh, and a rover. But uh, Witten is there, captain as you, the slapper. He can't place him at all. Yeah, he's a red-headed fellow. He used to yeah. leap very quickly. And Beamish, I don't know much jump about him. But the Ruck Shelter knew him, a very snowy-headed fellow, won the Brownlow Medal. McDonald and also Hobbs. Little Hobbs should have the record for the best mark yeah. in Australia. In all Australia. Australia. Well, Schultz, Schultz and Boozy, they're a good pair on the on the tribunal, Jack. Pretty strong, tough fellas. Oh, <laughs> don't, oh, don't get me going, will you? He was a tough player. Neil Bissy on the tri was on the tri yeah, used to knock him oh over. Oh, he used to run in and knock you down with a shell. And Jack, you'll have to be quiet because we oh, want to him. see the last <laughs> quarter of this grand final. A butterfly knocked him coming out. Up. A butterfly yeah, knocked him out. <laughs> That's it. Anyway, we're coming to the last quarter of the grand final of 1961. And there are the quarter by quarter scores of the 61 grand finals. You can see an overwhelming victory for Hawthorne. And now we'll look at their poster, Jack. Look at that mighty Ooh, hawk yeah. there. Was that the first time it came out? Yeah, very first. It's the only one they ever won, Jack. It's <laughs> the first time. And who was the best player on the ground? Brendan Edwards. No and how many kicks did he get? Uh, 52. 
That's not the record. Barry no. Cable holds the record. Peter for 100, 133 <laughs> kicks in one game. He was getting a kick every three seconds. <laughs> Who? Barry Cable in, in, in a match for Subiac on one of those teams over there. Hayden a, Bunton Jr. got more than that. How many did he get? 187. Oh, but they in a game. Yeah, he kicked easy. it to himself. They were going easy up to and get down over in West Australia and South oh. Australia. Like, oh, I could go over and smoke your cherry wood all the time. Over oh. there. Smoke your cherry? Well, Jack, <laughs> you might say some ridiculous <laughs> things, but I was out at the North Melbourne ground one night yes. talking to some of the great patrons of the game. Is and this, this is true, what This, this, this is, is true. true. Because you're now, watch this lies, fella. You know. Now, watch this fella. Here's some nice vintage film. That we used to take right back in, I can't remember, when it's that far back to be true. Here he him. comes. Now you watch and listen. We uh, have a look at what happened at North Melbourne tonight there, please. You've seen some good players out in the ground, do you? What about Lou or Jack? You ever see them play here? Louie. Louie, who? Lou Richard, the champion. Oh, the champion. Pat Kelly's mate. <laughs> Pat Kelly, yeah. <laughs> Pat's mate. Pat knocked him out in front of the Collingwood Social Club. He did. Downed him. Yeah, carried him off and dire. Yeah, that Jack or Jack will be here tonight too. Big Jack, he got the first match he ever played. He got carried off in the stretcher who, against North. Who fixed him up? Big John Lewis, downed him in front of the Richmond stand. In front of the Richmond stand. Did he what? Well, tell me now, what about uh, the team last? Did you watch them play last week? Did I watch them play? I've come from Cairns to see North play. Well, you're going yeah. to have to Waverley. You got a ticket for a start? No, no, got one. I'll give you one. Yeah, thank just you. a minute. Yeah. Afterwards, right. afterwards. All right, thanks. No. Uh, uh, well, how will I, who will I pick this week? Oh, I don't know. No changes, I wouldn't think, would they? Well, they all, did you see training Tuesday night? Training Tuesday night? No. Uh, yes, yes, I was there. Yeah, of course I was there. Is Zick all right? Oh, he's perhaps he's having a lend of them. Having a lend of them, was he? <laughs> well, what about, how's he go with, with Laurie? With Laurie X. Laurie? And Stephen. Laurie, w Laurie wouldn't pull his socks out. What? He never used to punch me, did what? he? He chased you from one end of the north down <laughs> to the other. <laughs> well, we hope that uh, north's good luck continues in the final. Oh, yes, they'll be all right. They'll be all right. Four, year, big, four big years, haven't we? Louie hasn't tipped them for how long? Louie? Where's he going to the race and listen to the Louie? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was no boots and socks on. <laughs> Thanks very much, Joe. Good on you. Thanks. Oh, he's Pearl. <laughs> Where'd you find him behind the gas on with it? <laughs> Joey O'Keefe. Oh, I finished up knocking him right out when I see him. Mm. He's got uh, that, those papers you got under his arm there. That's 1955 Herald, you know. <laughs> he's really up with the time, <laughs> Joey. He's very nasty about Johnny Lewis, Jack. Was he? <coughs> Did he Johnny was... Lewis betting him knock you out? But that's, he did that's too. a long time ago. Long time. Well, tell me. I was only a boy. Your real experience in the finals, in the grand final, in one of the grand finals, Jack? Well, uh, I, I think the, the worst the worst thing I've ever done in my life was I called Mr. Hickey Mister. Red Hickey. Yes, what, in, the, in 37? Yeah, and that was no, 31. Or 31. 31. I kicked him, I beat him, I did everything. And I thought after the match, you know, when he said, What's your name, son? I thought he was going to hit me. <laughs> and what did he say to well, you? I said, die, Mr. Hickey. <laughs> die, Mr. Hickey? Oh, well, that's... Then I ran for me I thought you'd say, die, <laughs> oh. Well, I've had a few years to to think about it now. What about that fellow? Was he telling the truth, Jack, or not? Oh, like he's a rat bag. He is, a, he is, he's sticking he's up for you. Bag, what was he yeah. drinking? Blue kerosene yeah, or something? Oh, tell you what, was a nip in the air, that I'll bloke drink it. Who is he? He was talking a bit of sense there about that back line, though, just to say. Oh, you you were idiot. frightened to go down there, was, Louis. You were frightened to go down there. I didn't like North Melbourne with Pat <laughs> Kelly and Ted. But the bloke that worried me more than Pat Kelly and Ted Gerrard was a bloke called Laurie Ick. Yeah. Yeah. Ted Gerrard, I said to Ted Gerrard at the Paran Market one day, who was the toughest player he ever played against? He said, I didn't play against him, I played with him. Laurie Ick was the, he said, my <laughs> teammate, he said, when he ran down the race, he used to froth at the eyes. Yeah. And I'll tell you something else, Tim, they wouldn't come off, the rabbits wouldn't come off no. the wall the, to go down to see Kelly. Oh, no. And he he was he worse. pleaded with him, brother and... Uh, yeah. And pleaded. who took his place? And he went down there and... Albert Mantella. And bang. Broke there was jaw. another one now. Look, at all. I, I wasn't going to do this, but I will oh. give you a bit of a chance. What? Have you got a recipe? I have, and I'll tell you what they Is are. Is this a new one? They're stuffed... Frankfurt's, as Cacti <laughs> used to call them, stuffed 
Prangers. Prangers. The old Prangers, Jack. Remember them? What do you? What? What, what do you need? <laughs> Jack used to blow his prangers up. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, beyond the, the, the Richmond ground. And that they, was the yeah. day before they AIDS. Fill, fill them up with water Louis? and stand in the balcony and drop all the people going at past. Richmond, you know, you come past that just around the side of that grandstand and he had his kerosene tin there yeah, with, with his fire underneath it and the prang is there. But he's gone for his life a second Gee, time. Hey, yeah. that'd be bad. tipped over. They I'm, all went down. Yeah. So we picked them he all picked up. picked them up and threw them in again. Hey, but wouldn't that be fantastic? Jack, wouldn't that be fantastic using hot prangers? Good, you'd be in trouble. Would you? <laughs> the, fella, the fella at Clunes that used to tell him at Clunes used to oh, say, go one better. <laughs> used to say, eat them here and die around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give us that then. Well, the, <coughs> pardon me, these are oh. stuffed frankfurts and these are fantastic. You need two and a half cups of well seasoned mashed potato, one tablespoon of melted butter, one third cup of finely chopped onion. A quarter cup of chopped parsley, one tablespoon of chopped green That's pepper, French. ten frankfurts, one tablespoon Jackson, of prepared this is mustard. A French lesson. <laughs> no, it's not. And half a cup of grated uh, sharp cheese. That's you know tasty cheese. Oh. Now this is what you do. You combine the potato, butter, onion, parsley, and green pepper. Mix well. Split the frankfurts lengthwise, but do not cut them right through. And then spread a surface of mustard on that uh, part where you've cut them, and place in the hollow, uh, and place into uh, into a shallow grease uh, bake, baking dish. Yeah. Right. Now, pile or pipe the uh, potato mixture into the frankfurts and oh, geez, sprinkle with grated cheese. Get some better glass so, from <laughs> so, you bake at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes, and you've got these beautiful frangers uh, stuffed, yeah. and uh, they've got this mashed potato <laughs> mixture, and they are sensational. Is Bob. this what you take to the football? Well, well when, when Ed and I take then. a hamper to the football <laughs> in the outer. Yeah. Well, yeah. look, just while you're doing the rest, I just have to find this in my pocket. Margaret's giving me, I've got to get some broccoli. Beans, pumpkins, apples, bananas, carrots and lettuce. That's my list for the and day. What have you had that since 1964? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder we're hungry. You know? It's unbelievable. <laughs> now, Jack, I think we'll go and Excuse have me. a look at the Melbourne team. Oh. Because we're looking at 1964 now. 64. Give us a look at it. Yes. There we go. They had some good footballs in this one. That's the Brassie bobbed up in this one, did he not? Yes. 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 There he is. They are the great footballer. I never thought he'd make a footballer when he first started, Bob. You know, that's by Joe Brass. Oh, he gosh. came out of his shell, this fellow. Like, he's only a medium-sized fellow. And, uh, Very small, Jack. Yeah, was he well, the first ruck raver, Jack? I think no. It could have. No, it wouldn't be. Harold but... Rumney was. Back <laughs> 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 flag, he never got out of that. Harold no, he... Rumney was the what? first ruck well, raver well, in the well, days well, of Leader Collins. Oh, well, you stop at Brass and Man. The Man was a very good footballer, too, at the same time. And... Compton, he, of course, he was, did some shocking things. Tassie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Johnson was very good. Yeah. Anderson, Rowett, not bad. It wasn't a sort of, the, the names didn't, except Brassie's about the only one that you remember sort of out of what those. What about Williams? He was a pretty good player. Johnny Williams? Yes, but he's playing in the centre there. He's yeah. half-back playing. He made his reputation half-back. We're going over to look, well, Jack, we'll have a look at Lewis's team. The Collingwood team. Oh, this it's is the going Collingwood to come team. Up. This will be big. Let's and of course, Collingwood uh, out of the side is uh, Max Urquhart, and that's rather strange because he polled best in the Brownlow for Collingwood. Yes. I think, uh, and Kenny Turner, 150 games is out of the well, team. Well, his son's out of the team now, too. Oh, well, he's retired. Oh, uh, retired. Kenny, yeah, he? He, he gave good service, and so was Kenny, a great yeah. player. But into the side comes Mickey Bone. Remember little Mickey oh, Bone? Couldn't Mickey he go Bain. in? He wasn't he a great rover, but by God, he was a tryer. A, a tri and of course, <laughs> Uh, Ronnie Reeves goes into the back pocket. There's the team, and uh, Potter, Ted Potter, finished up playing at centre half back for Conley. Remember that day player. he hit big John Nichols, put 26 stitches in his eye. I tell you what, he knocked eye. him out, didn't he? Oh. Teddy Potter, Potter. Ted Potter. Oh, Teddy Potter, yeah, it was an accident, though. Uh, oh, yeah. An accident, John. <laughs> Certainly an accident. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, he knocked big John down, didn't he? Oh, he, he did, he bounced. That's a pretty good Collingwood try, but unfortunately <laughs> we didn't win because you notice that Crompton came up the ground. He was told not to go past the centre. He... It's not the game yet. We haven't seen the game. I'm going to tell oh, you a bit about it. Oh, you're not allowed to. Oh, well, we, you, you, like most people I've got know. one other secret too. Well, I'll tell my secret first. He went up the ground. <laughs> now, keep this to yourselves, you yeah, people who are watching the show. He went Mine's up the ground. Mine's the best room of all time. Wait a minute, Bob. Smith said, don't go past the centre. He goes past the centre, gets the ball, kicks the winning goal, and Smith kissed him after the game. Had he missed the goal, Smith would have knocked him right out. Tell me that story about when Jack Regan missed the goals at Collingwood and went up to Jock McHale and said. Yeah, well, listen, Jack Regan first started as a half forward, finished up being the best uh, fullback the game's ever known. Well, but he was only a 17-year-old kid playing on the half forward line 
And it's minutes to go at the Brunswick Street Oval playing Fitzroy and Collingwood are down by three points and Jack Regan takes a mark about 45, 50 metres out. And a beautiful kick. And he said to Sid Coventry, who was captain, he said, Sid, what will I do? And Sid said, you better kick a bloody goal or you won't get home tonight. <laughs> so the kid goes back, Jack Regan, misses. When he goes back in the rooms, he sees old Jock sitting, he used to sit there with his head down, his felt, left, felt head all curled up like that, not looking up. And Jack, being a good Catholic boy, went up and said, Mr McHale, I'm terribly sorry. And old Jock looked up and said, you arsehole. He said, go and throw yourself in the yarrow, will you? <laughs> and don't forget to come up. <laughs> well, that's the... I toned that down a bit, oh, actually. Yeah. Well, now, I've got this huge rumour. <laughs> yeah? I think it's Barassi's last game with Melbourne. Is that right? Yes. I've got a whisper, Jack, that he might be going to Carlton yeah. next year. And also Bluey Adams. As captain Adam and coach. His last game, yes. Who? Bluey Adams. But Barassi might go to... Is he going to leave Melbourne? He'll leave Melbourne. He, oh, I don't know. Uh, must have been a bit of money around then, too. Jackie, somewhere. Sh Jackie does go, but keep it to yourself, will <laughs> you? Well, let's go, yeah. well, let's go, let's go and have a look <laughs> at the... <laughs> Jack, we want to look at this magnificent last quarter of right. Melbourne and Collingwood. Okay. The whole game? The whole... Oh, this is... Oh, this is the Rothmans game. We're going to see highlights and everything. I don't want to look at this because Collingwood lost this. Make another <laughs> one. Oh, all right, well, let's go to it now. The middle. Collingwood calls on its never-give-in spirit, but the Demons are equal to their challenge. Four points behind, Collingwood throws everything into the final minutes. Trying for a break on the wings, the Magpies are almost through, but Melbourne's strong and speedy defence holds firm, although stretched to the limit. the siren. Melbourne wins 8 16 64 to Collingwood's 8 12 60. Well, what an exciting game. And of course, the highlights Crompton, Gabbo, Gabbo running up, bouncing the ball. What did he actually say when he got into the goal square? Well, you know, he was bouncing at one, two, three, four, and he nearly lost it. Yeah. And then when he was ready to kick, not he said, Geez, I hope I'm running the right way. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, the best players, Jack, in that, uh, in that grand final were Bluey Adams and Brian Dixon who, of course, was counting his kicks. And uh, where are they? Oh, 60. there they are. Look at them. That, it's a great shot of the demons here, isn't it? But the, uh, but the best players... Brian Dixon, did he ever count how many kicks he got, Jack? <laughs> yeah, I forget how many. He was the first one that started that, you know. They'd start to take those. Someone said to me that Norm Smith said he's the most over-educated idiot he ever met. <laughs> <laughs> he said you, you're... Uh, uh, you're of course, an, really, you're an really educated, no sense of humor educated genius, but a common sense fool. Is that yeah. what his words were? Oh, yeah, you know everything. Sense. And, well, and you know... Norm Smith also said, the best committee you can have is a committee of two with one away sick. <laughs> 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 well, now, there were two magnificent players for Collingwood in that game. Who were they? Laurie Hill and Trevor Steer. Laurie Hill was a good player. Trevor Steer got him on the... <laughs> I ran three seconds in the Cape and he won one. It's unbelievable. Did you ever win the Cape? <laughs> three seconds and Trevor you never Steer. Never won it. Uh, Trevor Steer won one. Oh, oh. I'm sorry, Trevor, you're watching this uh, video, but uh, gee, you were just an ordinary player, kid. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a big fella. We're gonna, we'll terrible. send him a special one. Hey, my grandson came up to me the other day, Ned. Ned. And he said, Is he redheaded? No, he's not. That's Matthew. He said, oh, Matthew's Ned redheaded. said, Grandpa, can you make a noise like a frog? And I said, Ned, why'd you say that, Matthew? And Ned. And Ned said, uh, well, last night Mummy was talking to Daddy. She said, listen, when your old man croaks, we're all going to Disneyland. <laughs> 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 well, I think we better go and uh, have a look at 68. And, of course, the 68 teams are Carlton and Essendon. And, Lewis, you have the opportunity oh, to have a look at the 68 Carlton side. I'll put side. Uh, these glasses on. I'll oh, put them on again. Well, there's one change at Carlton. Dennis Minari comes in to replace Ian Nicholl. And, of course, uh, who was injured. Now, Minari's 20 years of age. He's 5 foot 10. I didn't know he was that tall. And was unlucky to miss out on the second semi-final with a knee injury. It's a very good star side. And any side that's got stars like Nichols and old Serge Silvani, a great player. And, of course, his son playing now. Stephen's doing a great job. And my old mate, Gags Gallagher. And uh, there's Percy. We'll never forget Percy kicking the goal pass, will we, ever? <laughs> great effort. And one of the great brains of football, Percy Jones. You know, the brain, he'd be an imbecile. <laughs> so we've got Percy Jones in the forward pocket. And one of the really, uh, what's the word? Uh, 
charismatic, charismatic uh, player. Players as Brent Croswell. Brent Croswell. What, what a, a player. Genius. And yeah. there's that great fullback, uh, Wes Luffs. Lord Stuffingham. And that the great Jezelenka. Who'll ever forget that great mark of Alec Jezelenka? He's a marvellous player. Could have played in the centre, in the uh, full forward, in the back line, any position you played him. Jack, there was a famous gag about him, wasn't there, Jezelenka? You know that one. Which one was that? Oh, I'm not going to tell you what you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what so about the one when he, when he was the. Uh, he yeah, said, yeah. What's his. Where's he come from? Yeah, his where's father, he come from? Years to tell his it. His father was a. His father was a Ukrainian. No, his no, mother, mother was is Ukrainian. Ukrainian. And his father was, was Italian. Italian. And the bloke said, "No wonder the blood you can kick." He thought he said Stallion. A Stallion. Well, we better get to Essendon, Jack, because you knew a lot about them. Yes, they've I made did. one change. One change they made. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Greg well. Brown's out. <laughs> it's a poor man. Listen, they, they, a, they always had a saying about Essendon that you, they, all they had to do was walk up Buckley Street and they could pick up five players. And I reckon that was true there because they've done it again this year. They picked up about five fellas there you don't know anything about and they're all champions. Well, you wouldn't but believe it. Look, they've put, even in those days in the 90s, was Sheedy there then? He got seven on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they were always trying to work Smooties, that's on the side up there. They were yeah, all smart. What about Garlic, Pryor, Evans, Davis? Well, he wasn't a bad player when you think of it, is he? Oh, yeah, yeah. all Davises were we champions. Had, he was there, where, there's old Yapper. He's in the half back. The black. Cooker. Cooker, yeah. Cooker Barra. Is that close to Blue, cricketer? Ellis and Fletcher. No. <laughs> is that. Uh, yeah, close. Close. My Fraser. There's a bit of a doubt about Fraser, you know. I got told that he's Did got he? an injured knee. It might be the end of it. it might, yes. Well, yeah. he was well, a good player too, well, That's he? right. And Sproul. there's a fella still there in amongst the seven, that Blethen, Jack. Yeah. He wears glasses like Louie. They're playing him in the wrong place, Sproul. He's, he's, a, he's, a, prefect. he's a, player. He's a prefect at school. Who? Still. Who? Blethen. Is he? Might oh, be he wear glasses. He was the first one to introduce the ones. What do you call those? The other ones? Contact, contact lenses. Contact lenses. Yeah, contact lenses. Yes, he looked like he had to go. He was going to give up football there for a while. Oh, yeah. well, look. Mm. We, do, we want you to look at this magnificent last... Three-point victory. A marvellous game there. And, of course, uh, we'll look at the poster of... Oh, what a... The Blues. Look at that. Who was that was supposed to be? I'm not too sure, but... That little crane, he was a marvellous player, wasn't he? Yes, he's Great the best player. player. Great wing player. And Gerlach. Gerlach for Essendon. Yeah. Played in the back pocket. Very rarely played a bad game. Daryl Gerlach. Like, that brings back memories, doesn't I'd it? I'd say. And, Jack, if you hadn't have gone to the cricket ground yeah. to see that final, there would have only been 116,827 because there are 828 there. A record. 116,000. And they're talking about how they improve football. It's I mean, that lovely Jack, car, is it? Yeah. A joker. It's better but now, you football, to... Jack. You've got to give it. Is it? Players are better. Are they? Tougher. Are they? Tougher. They're not tougher. Oh, where would they there be? They go, where would they, they, they go? be wearing slippers against us now? Oh, oh yes. Be well, I reckon I've seen the be best... On their toes? I reckon <laughs> the best... Jack, the oh. best centre Ford ever played football is a bloke called Wayne Carey at North Melbourne. He'd... Well, I, I would say he's in the top ten. Is it, he's better than Nash. Oh, oh, turn it up. He hasn't got what Nash has. has. There's has? one little thing he refused to be beaten. He hasn't got that yet. And Nashy never used to go out every two or three no, weeks. No, he played every... He played cricket, international cricket, and went straight Everything. to football. And, he, and he used to see the best footballer every morning. He could kick morning. with either foot as straight as a die. He could. What's but that, 99? He only played 99 games. Yeah, and never won the club best and fairest. That, that's how good he was. Well, Nash. Bob Pratt never won the club's best well, and fairest either. Well, that's bad luck for Bob Pratt, too. No, I, I never, won, never won the Copeland Trophy. I, I ran three seconds. And I never won a Brownlow medal. Oh, well, that's One year, Jack, you were well up in the brown oh, line. I, I had one also on up on everything I did. Yeah. Did you <laughs> polish? Broke down. Oh. And bro you broke down, oh, Jack. What'd you do? I had 17 points up and, and 22 won it and in the th fifth match. Yeah, it's well, seven points that, up in five yeah. games. Yeah. Oh. You, know, oh. you can only get you three again. 15. 15. 15. You had oh, seven. They gave me two for the interstate match. I won that. <laughs> well, now, look, we'll go to one of the magnificent grand finals, 1963, in which Geelong played Hawthorne. Of course, you don't have to know who won that one. But before we do, just let's have a look at the old timers at it once again. And I think this is in Lewis's it's flat. The magnificent Into grand final. Welcome to uh, the edition of League Teams, in which anything goes because we're out in Lewis Thomas Charles Richard Spent House. In the Turak Road. Well, we've done uh, it up specially tonight. You know, have we? The, uh, 
There's the marble. Uh, well, the pillars. They're, they're, that's uh, taken. Well, they have places. Is that Travantine? And it's not Travantine. No, it's Roman, actually. Roman? It, they're Roman pillars because they have been Roman all over this house here. <laughs> I can been. see that they're not even and standing straight. Of course, I'd like straight. to show you a few of my trophies. What? That's the one I got uh, for ballroom dancing. <laughs> have you got plenty of what that, have you? Know, Lewis, where you hide it? Uh, listen, this is the one that Jack got for one legged dancing. <laughs> oh, that's a flamingo. Did you win that? Where did you? What room did you win won, that at, Jack? I won that at the Green Mill, as a matter of fact. At the Green at Mill? Green Mill, yeah, There's a bust of Ron Casey. We keep that in the house to keep it all comfortable. <laughs> Jack and I want to know that's exactly Lord Nelson, if you don't where know. Where you hide it? Huh? Lord what about Nelson. the giveaways? Did where he, he marry He gave it to my great great grandmother. He was on with her for a while. Was he? <laughs> that's you know what that's saying, come kiss me hard. That was her he was kissing all the time. <laughs> oh. Isn't it beautiful? And the flat looked lovely. Isn't it? It it does, look that's a real live bird, the back there, you know. Where's that cupboard you got all the giveaways in? Shut up, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it just goes to show you how dumb some footballers are and some coaches are. Ron Barassi was coach at Carlton that particular time, I think. No, he wasn't. He was playing with Melbourne. But he said to me on the following week, he said, my oh God, your flat's beautiful. He really thought it was at my flat, you know. That's how dummy is, truly. What about, what about Jack with that moustache? Yeah, I don't remember that. You used to have a moustache for a while. <laughs> did I? Yeah, you did. Is that the, oh. Did Jack have the moustache that time when lay girls came in to see it? Oh. <laughs> the lay girls came in and I said, and one sat on Jack's knee and I said, that's a, Jack said, by oh, jeez, a good sort. I said, it's a plug. He said, I don't care, she's a bloody good sort. So he goes down to uh, Channel uh, 7 on the Sunday and sees uh, Case. Case said, how'd you go with those lay girls? He said, oh, jeez, Case is a good sort. She's the one who sat in my knee. She's a beauty. He said, I didn't know they were transistors, truly. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's, let's just get to, let's get to this magnificent grand final. 1963, Jack. We'll give you Hawthorne's team. Right, now, oh, well, give us a look at that Hawthorne side. Yeah, there Parkin they go. Parkin Hay and Cooper now, not bad Parkin. There was a, he was a dash, he was very game, Parkin. He was, you know, he wasn't... Good, strong, good, good pocket strong player. He was Great good sense strong. of humour. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's like humour Looks like get his gag. Yes, Hay. <laughs> well, this, these were bad boys too, Hay hey, and Steve Hay. Hey. Pretty <laughs> tough group, oh, this, Jack. Oh, I'll say, young and McPherson, if you don't mind, please, umpire. Oh. <laughs> And they, they'd give you anything at all, and of course, I think the big fella was coaching them in too. Oh, yeah. He what about Coverdale, Jack? Was he going oh, to be a very yes, good player? Yes, he play? was going to be a very, very good player. What happened to him in the finish, Bob? I don't know. He, 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 he went, went back, off. Yeah, he went, went off. off. I think yeah. he started the to play the man. The Fisher, they weren't, you know, weren't. Well and what about Peck? Mort, Mort wasn't a bad Your player. Your friend Peck. Oh, bad boy, wasn't he? Wasn't he a bad boy, <laughs> Peck? He was a good full forward. Oh, I'll say he was. Where would he be now with some of those? He kicked 193. He well, now, there's the Hawthorne team now. Let's and, of course, look at the Geelong side and, and especially the coach. Well, Bob, I must say this, that uh, Bob Davis uh, was uh, a coach that loved football and that's what he tried to teach his players. And that's why they played so well. They were a brilliant team, mainly because Bob, when he played himself, was a, not because he's sitting here, he was one of the most dashing players I've seen. He was about 14 and a half stone, played on a half forward flank, but played in many other positions later. And was what you could run uh, run a hundred yards in even time? Oh, easily. Easily. <laughs> I knew you'd do it easily. I'm trying to give you a big rap there. <laughs> one, one the but anyway, he coached the side. Time. And what? Uh, <laughs> I, but he, he used to love him. He used to love football. And he tried to pass that message on. I think he succeeded. But let's have a look at the side. Into the side comes Alistair Lord, and what a great player, Brownlow medalist. He, but they hasn't played for a month. Out is Brian Lowe, and there's one player missing from the team. And it's a Body blow, really, because it's Terry Callan, a very good back pocket player, or wherever he played. I think back pocket in the centre, any position. And who do you tip this time? I tipped uh, Geelong. Did you? Yeah, I think so. They brought that handbags around. I it wasn't in vogue no, then. They don't start knew. on that, Jack. <laughs> no, they didn't have it in those days, I no, must say. No, don't be falling for that. <laughs> who business? brought the handbag business in? I don't know. It was after I, I relinquished the position. I hope I didn't say anything about it. I think you might have one day in here. And it stuck very much. Anyway, we'll go now and let's have a look at the last quarter. Of and it came to pass that a great pestilence descended upon the ancient city of Melbourne. And none of its inhabitants were untouched. And some were heard to cry out in strange tongues. And every seven days, the young men of the city would meet in combat. And each Thursday, three wise men would sit in judgment. And the wise men were John, 
Robert and Louis. And their judgment was delivered in league teams. <laughs> Well, it's lovely to have you back. You've obviously got tape number two. You've been able to insert it into your video machine. And, of course, did you hear that lovely voice? Don Rainsford, was it? Don Rainsford, one of the best voices... Uh, well, one of the best voices you could ever get. Voice-over. Voice-over. Fantastic, Beautiful. Don. Played with a uh, couple of games with Yeah, he came uh, from Carlton. Tasmania. He came from Tasmania. Was he Carlton. the bike rider or his son the bike son rider? Son was his bike, bike rider. rider. Son. A very good bike rider. <laughs> and, incidentally, my young grandson... <laughs> Well, Ned like, said is, to is Matthew, he the red headed one? No, said experience. to Matthew, the red headed one, he <laughs> said, Listen, Matthew, I found a condom on the patio today. Where? Which house was this? Uh, well, they at wanted, Porty. They wanted Turek. <laughs> and uh, he said, I found a condom on the patio today, Matthew. It wasn't Matthew, on your floor, nah, was it? I'm going to get this in a minute. <laughs> he said, <laughs> He said, I'm gonna, he said, I found a, a condom on the patio today, Matthew. And not Matthew said? No. He said, What's a patio? <laughs> He's a terrible thing, Jack, isn't it? Hey, Jack, oh, but today they talk about condoms and they... Oh, they it's, 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 and they're doing things on television. television. They're, like, television they're, wrong. they're doing all that... Wrong. Jack, all that monkey business. They're wondering why... The TV Can you get SBS on yours, Jack? You are. Get SBS. How's that some night? SBS, is it? Edna turns it off because I get in the mood. Hey, do you know that? Do you know what he said, Jack? Edna turns it off because he gets in the mood. I remember you going into a TAB and they said to the lady... You he be very careful, he said, I'm a dasher when I get going. She looked straight at Lou and said, do you want to have a bet or would you rather have a three-month course of vitamins, a week's notice and a soft bed? Yeah. Uh, you, you fancied that Charlie down there. We used to go, Bob and I used to go down every uh, Saturday morning work our quadrellas out and we used to go to this woman down. She was a lovely lady. Yeah, she said, uh, you, you fixed me up, she said, you need three months' notice. I'll never forget, that hurt my feelings. I was never the same after. Well, you don't do much, that business as much as you get older, do you? Know, is that Bobby? You used to uh, still Someone said up? it. Someone said you're every Thursday whether Edna's awake or asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I came home the other night. This is no kidding. I, ca oh. I came home the other night, yeah. about two in the morning. I'd been out with Stephen Phillips and Jack Doyle at half boost. And I went in the bedroom and there's Edna asleep with her mouth open. And I dropped two aspirins in it and she said, I haven't got a headache. I said, OK, let's start the funny business, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> That's some of vintage oh. league teams. Let's have a little bit more of it now. And we'll go back and look at Jack after the champagne. Would you like a glass of Dom Perignon? <laughs> Is that Dom Perignon? No, it's not at Seaview. It's beautiful champagne. Oh, well, I'll have a little it, bit of Seaview, yes. Yeah. Jack, what about you, mate? Is it cold? No, I'll put it on the... Just got it off the boil, oh, Jack. Just got it off the boil, have you? The yes, steak try that. Home, Would you mind sipping it to try if it's right for uh, temperature? Yes, you can open it now. <laughs> <laughs> you think oh, it's a it's bit a... coffee? <laughs> no, no, so. it's not you coffee. Just you talk, one is this what try, normally happens out in Turak? Yes, well, we have this every night, champagne. No, we don't, we're, our rubbish tins, we don't use rubbish tins. What do you use? Briefcases at our place, very, very wealthy. <laughs> Briefcases. <laughs> and don't forget, of course, Charles Lux. Charles Lux. Charles Lux. Those beautiful... I wish he was still in business. I could do with it. And don't forget the CV, CV champagne, because we love it. If you're watching this video, send some out to our place, by all means. We wouldn't care. And, and if you do have the franchise for Dom Perignon, substitute it. <laughs> <laughs> I think perhaps we'd better go yes. and have a look at the 1962 grand final now, because, Jack, I think you're going to look after the Essendon team, because it's Essendon and, of course, and Carlton. Well, Essendon, uh, in goes uh, Graham Johnson. Uh, the vice captain Leakey, that's uh, had a big leak, this fella. Well, there is a big leak about yeah, this at the moment, a, Jack. He's got a Did you know ankle. that? He, he didn't want to play. Yeah. In fact, he said, I'm not playing. And finished up best man in the ground. Well, he was one of the great well, players in the ground, but he, he really did tell the committee he wasn't going to play. Yeah, well, did that happen in your day? I'll tell you what, I couldn't get out there quick enough, mainly for the money. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he'll play. I reckon he'll play. I reckon he'll play too, yeah. All right. Well, there, look at that. Now, there's little uh, Jackie Clark. What a great player. Yes, he was a great player. But I, I mentioned Coleman here too. He was coaching them at the time, wasn't mm, he? Wasn't he a wild he a, coach? I mean, wasn't he a great player, though, when yeah. you think through it? And Jackie Clark, was he a good player too? The centre player. Yeah. These are two good All players. Right. Now, now, right, Lewis, do you want to have a look at your team at Carlton? 
Well, it's Carlton, of course, uh, into the side comes Ken Greenwood. He's a first-year player. He's 20 years of age, 6 foot 2 and 12 stone 8. What's that in the old... Uh, no, in the new. Give it to the new people. I can't think what it'd be in, uh, <laughs> in the... You don't know! No, no. I don't. It's 12 no, stone 8. Weigh myself now. And 6 <laughs> foot 2, that's it. What's that? He doesn't even weigh himself now because it's in kilograms. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't understand what it is. <laughs> I can't work it out. <laughs> You're still the same height, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's rather amazing. You can't work it out, Jack. <laughs> uh, into the side comes Brian. Uh, out of the side goes Brian Buckley with an injured shoulder. Yeah. Now, one of the big uh, upsets here. They've overlooked Gordon Collis, who incidentally won a Brownlow medal. He's been out. He's been well, ill. He didn't win it in this no, case. No, I know he did. He did later on. They oh. weren't to know no, that, were they? The hospital, now he's been ill and he's in. Ho he's, been, he's in the hospital now. And I, I'm going to tell you something. I reckon this bloke could win a Brownlow medal. One of the real predictions that he's ever made, Jack. It? What was the worst prediction you ever made? Before that fellow that you the know, the worst name we don't mention, took over your nom de plume. Uh, nom de plume. <laughs> be, be original. <laughs> Incidentally, the worst he's prediction... He's working I, here now, don't you say The worst prediction it. I ever made... Yeah. Oh, we're not working here. We're working for Australian video. Oh. Now, get this straight. Oh. The worst prediction I ever made was when I tipped Geelong to lose to, to a side and I had to row across the, the, with Billy Goggin in a bathtub. Yes. And there was, what, there were more oh. people and more people down there than there were 13, at the head 000. of the... 13,000. Oh. people on each side of the bar went. And we're nearly across and down in a motor <laughs> launch comes Bob Davis and all the Geelong players dressed as pirates. And they're belting <laughs> hell out of us with tomatoes, flour bags. But what Bob didn't know, that the players mutinied against him and threw him overboard, didn't they? And then Billy Goggin jumped out the bath oh. and left me on my own. And Billy couldn't swim no. to make it worse. <laughs> Willie Whitelegs. 13,000 people. And that's how popular I was in those days when I made those predictions, wasn't I, Bob? Oh, oh that's oh, unbelievable, isn't oh, it? Oh, isn't We'll go and see the last quarter of this after all that rubbish that Louie put on. <laughs> Well, here we come, the last quarter of Essendon and Carlton in 1962. A very easy victory to Essendon, as you can see. 90 points to 58. And the poster, and of course some great names in the grand final. Clark, Mitchell, Burt, Leek and Epus for uh, the Bombers, of course. And uh, for Carlton, the best players, Silvani. What a marvellous player. James, Jack, he's another oh, one. Brilliant. You missed him, from it's some Pats. Brilliant. Donaldson, Sankey. And John Nichols, just Catholic? what I mentioned. Was John... he Catholic, Johnny James? Oh, was oh, he? Was he? Was the Pope a Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there we go. And now we'll be looking... I think we're going right back to 1960, the very start of the 60s, when uh, Jack and Lou were really at their prime. And let's have a look at some vintage. When Alex Epus, I think at one stage he left... He was a window cleaner, then he was something... And then he decided he'd be the sausage king. He made sausages, and they were the best sausage I've ever tasted in my life. Well, let's have a bit of a look. I think he sent them in to get a bit of Now he's a millionaire. Way. Is he? Yeah, multi. Like you. I'm not. You're not? Ask. Money's not the most important thing in your life, as what long as it? you're happy. I'd rather be wealthy and sad than uh, poor and unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> and happy, he's mucked you? that up. I don't know where he is. Let's uh, have a look at some old-time league teams. Well, of course, just before we get on to uh, Carlton's uh, team for Saturday, I do have the final five. This is a Nostradamus prediction for 1987. Hawthorne on top, Carlton second, Sydney third, Western Australia fourth, and Queensland <laughs> fifth. Perfect. And the first semi is going to be played in Sydney, the second in Perth, the elimination final in Brisbane, the grand final at the MCG on the last Sunday in September. And, of course, that'll be a curtain raise to the first test between Ireland and Australia. <laughs> so there we are for next What's year. What's your favourite food? <laughs> oh, look, I love bangers and mash sausages. They are fantastic. Well, they are the what? big bag of sausages. Oh, oh, alligator right. sediment. The <laughs> cooker <laughs> bar. The cooker. Hey, uh, Jack. <laughs> no, I get How sausages. old are these? They just came in today. They're mashed <laughs> You can sausages. smell them through. The plastic. Oh, no. <laughs> after you, you smell your sense. The, the garlic goes Cooker. right through your body. You walk in a room and you clear a room out in about three seconds. Would you be able to get a recipe so don't I could... Don't burp after you've had them either. Would you be able to get a recipe so I could cook these up for Saturday and have them cold you, at the MCG? You could do that. Just go on, go home and parboil them. Parboil? And then, then, then grill them and take them to football. They won't burst if you parboil them. Oh, is that why they won't jump out of their skins? That's right. right. 
Well, now, there, they don't jump out of their skins, Jack, and you learned that on that night, and you've been having... Do you have them with mint and peas, Jack? No, I eat mint them. Uh, just, just eat them, Bob. I love them, as a matter of fact. Do you? Yes, we're born and bred. And well, you them. should use those that he gave, and there's no good saving them, you well, know. Well, I've got them deep praise. Oh, you got them deep <laughs> He had a kill guard. He never had a big priest. <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you moved from Docker Street down into that salubrious area where you live now, Jack, did you take all your prized possessions with you or did you start afresh down there? No, I'd lost them. I've lost everything, Bob. I haven't got any memos or anything. About, haven't about all your memorabilia, yeah, Jack? Yeah, it's all gone, yeah. Oh, I'll lend them to Lou and you. <laughs> hey, why don't you give me your dirty old jock strap? That's what you gave me. I wouldn't put it in the toilet. <laughs> well, let's go to 1960 and, of course, that grand final was between Melbourne and Collingwood. Yeah, it certainly was. was. Now, Lou is going to look after the Well, team. Collingwood no. made two changes. Yeah. Out is uh, Billy Sarong injured and also Brian Dorman, who came from Merbeen. Who? Brian Dorman. He's still up there. Uh, no, he's in New South Wales training horses now. Well, uh, Billy Sarong, you know, was a marvellous handball player. Did you know yes. that? Yes, Australian champ. Foursomes. I don't think a singles. I think in the so. Oh, well, I don't know. Hooker Everson was in Now, wait a minute. I got a hooker's into the team. And also uh, a 28-year-old 20 year uh, Mick Turmey. He's back after seven weeks out, yeah. injured. Mm. And, uh, of course, we all know the result of that was match. Was he the fellow that knocked out Bronco McMaster? No, he was not. Who was it? Now, they all blame Billy Rose for that. But it was uh, Pat, Te uh, Pat Turmey came from the half-forward flank and went for a mark and got into the back of uh, Bronco. Just a mistake, was it? It was an accident. And they all blame poor old Billy Rose. When we went near the ball, they hooted him. Well, they put Ooh. us out of business. We Boy. would have won three flags we, in a row. We did. We beat you and uh, we killed you in that 53 grand final. Aren't you going to show that 53 oh, grand no, final? Oh, no. Well, just a minute. <laughs> Melbourne. Melbourne. Who's in the Melbourne, Melbourne team, Melbourne team Jack? Yeah, and There's oh. no change, as a matter of yeah. fact, at this stage. They have some injuries. Brass has got a groin injury. I never uh, heard of that up before. Up result capers, eh? <laughs> Adams has got stomach muscles. He's gone. He, he was good at then that. He can, he can Canale, fix him up quick Canale. and make a poke him under him. Too. He's, <laughs> he's got a boil in his left heel. Who? <laughs> yeah. That Brian Keneally. Keneally. Boil in his left heel. Yeah. 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 But they'll all be they'll fine. They'll all be yeah. fine, yes. And the last game for Johnny Beckworth. Now, there was a boy that could kick a football out of boundary. <laughs> Jack, there's Adams. got stomach muscle trouble. Yeah. yeah he got he get that through. Yeah. Well, it's that lifting the weights, you know, um, you're doing the stuff. Now, who did you tip in that actual final? I went for Collingwood and uh, once again I was wrong, but still they put <laughs> the You can't win them all. No, I don't think he won. I don't think he tipped a winner in 32 grand finals. And you know what, I'm leading most of the tipping contest this year and I, I hate it because it's ruining my reputation. Oh, oh well, there, let's see another one when you're wrong. We'll look at the last you quarter. Them okay, on Monday. righto, let's flip through these. You must love that, Jack. Look, Collingwood didn't score. That's it. what they scored this year. Is that our final score? <laughs> Richmond. Where'd we go? <laughs> they must oh, have went two, over two. Half the time. It's unbelievable, isn't <laughs> it? You know, I average more two, goals two. in my I career than that. I, 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 I kicked 470 <laughs> goals or something in my career and average 2.5 goals. <laughs> They've only kicked 2.5 there. You want to just quickly, <laughs> I know I shouldn't do it, tell us about the day you played at Essendon and the ball hit you on the chest and went yeah. back 50 yards. Well, you went to Fonz kind of training the next night. What did he say? He's, well, I'd, I'd played the entire year and I'd been playing for 15 years. I was 34 and I said to him at the beginning 34? of the year... 34? Yeah, I said to him at the beginning of the year, look, if I can't make the distance, I'll retire. Because in those days, the captains were elected un, uh, by the players, as Jack will tell you that. <laughs> anyway, I play against St Kilda on the 15th match of the year, kicked six goals and had a poor day. And... What? <laughs> We're going out the West. We can never play well out there. We have, they've won 25 goals to five. Anyway, halfway through the uh, last quarter, I haven't had a kick. So I make a lead. Was that unusual? Well, I was unusual, <laughs> yeah. Ma I made a lead. At that stage Dez of was career. one of the best stab kicks in the business. <laughs> yes. Passed to me. Hit me on the chest and bounced about 90 feet up the ground. Then I went for another. I said, I'd better go on the ball now and get a kick. So I went to the centre of the ground. The bloke kicked me. Hit me on the head and bounced about 90 feet in the air. I went home, I said, Dad, and I think I'll give it away. I've had it. When you got your own crowd, started to hoot you. She said, yes. She said, good. She said, actually, Jack. She's getting on my nerves. I'm doing all the bloody work about the place here. And we were losing money when I was away, too. 
Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I gave him the training on the Tuesday and I get stripped to go out the ground. Which hotel did you have then? The Town Hall in North Melbourne. Oh, that's right, oh. yes. Where you used to sell the veggies. Nice yeah, sly, anyway, so I go, nice go out in the ground. I go out in the ground. Sly grog, Jack, was that? <laughs> we didn't nice do any sly grog. Oh, he's still a bit under Out the back. <laughs> but at any rate, I go out in the ground, the coaches, the Fonz Kine's got them all out in the ground, kicking the ball around, doing circle work, and I go out and I walk, and I say, can I see you, Mum? <laughs> He said, yeah, no worries. I said, I think I'll give it away. He said, OK. Kick it over there, Charlie, will you? Over there, Fred. After 15 years. Yeah, after 15 oh, years. I thought, that's yeah. how they treat all great champions. They do, too. <laughs> <laughs> I kicked six goals my last one, you know, at yeah. the end of the season. I was that six. the day that was Bruce against... Young gave you the black eye? No, that was the day on your full back played with Victoria. Hey, I Bruce Morrison. Six, yeah, six goals I kicked against him. And <laughs> what do you think I got sacked when I went in the room? They said, you're finished now. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, oh, I said, what? Oh, I just okay. get six goals against the Victorian full back. Can't they tell some lies? <laughs> Let's look at them telling some more lies. <laughs> oh, you're bumping. Oh, knock the copy Don't all you over. go on because Jack... I've oh, got they're something they're... to read about you afterwards, Jack. Look at this. Oh, there there he goes. Cap I don't know who wrote that, but he didn't know much Jack. about it. Oh, look at him. Look. He used to party he here with the odd light too, Jack. <laughs> oh, Brill Creed. He looks like a poor man's Bruce <laughs> Andrew, doesn't he? <laughs> 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 like the... See, the part in his head, he parted with the odd light, I think. He missed the ball when he went to punch it, Jack. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> it was the part. He was white. <laughs> well, now, I think we'd better go on to a yes. new game. 1965, and, of course... Essendon St Kilda, this was a huge game. And uh, who's going to do what? I think uh, perhaps Lou oh. better do... St Kilda. Yeah, go but on, I think man. you should say something about Margaret Smith. Yeah, because so, uh, Oh, well, yeah. Margaret Smith, the Wimbledon champion, she's going to do a lap of honour before the game. I hope she was, I hope she was better than that lady that did the singing last year. <laughs> <laughs> I was that singer last year. Was she flat? <laughs> God, she How was would flat. you know she, she was better than a night carter's hat. <laughs> <really. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> she was the flattest singer. What was she singing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You should get it. I wasn't there with that thing. Oh, God. 78 degrees that day, too. Oh, 78. Oh, yeah. Must have I, been I, a, no wonder St. Kilda. Must have been a well, they're going for their very first premiership, St. Kilda. Yeah. And of course, uh, there's two chains in the side. Yeah, it but look at the names in the yeah, team. Yeah, but Ray Cross comes in the side, a half back, and a little. Uh, Bruce McMaster Smith. I think he came from Fitzroy yeah. to play there. <laughs> What's this other one? Come about on, about about you know who's out of the side? Who's hey, out of the side? Ross Oakley what left the hey? team. Oh. He left oh. the team to become the chief commissioner of the <laughs> AFL. That's why he left. Oh, he did his knee. He's, he's oh. got an injured knee. An injured he's knee. he's had one ever since. <laughs> That's bad luck. Has <laughs> injured a few since. And his future's in doubt. Oh, no, his That's future was luck. never in no, doubt. No, his future was never in doubt. I wish I was getting your money, uh, Ross. You're doing all right, kid. Good luck to you. Anyway, you deserve it. What oh. you know about football, you get right at the top of a football <laughs> stop, truly. <laughs> right, no, no, seriously, you won't, you won't get the Oh, yeah, you won't go to the Legends <laughs> room anymore. I always go to the Legends <laughs> room. Oh. <laughs> oh. Come on, Jack, what about Essendon? Essendon, I'll keep us. The old kookaburra's back. He never stopped talking. He's on the wing there. He talked when he played. He, when he was kicking, he was talking. Out of John Sumble, he fainted against Collingwood. Oh, the there's been a five. few <laughs> words written about that this week, Jack. Oh, it's um, Duncan Wright. What? Yeah, what, He's oh, one of yours. He never yeah. touched him. Oh, I've never, never, never touched, touched him. He what happened? The, the he wind. went and he got sunstroke. The it sun hit him wind. on the back of the neck and knocked him out. <laughs> well, that brophy was the umpire, and I he missed, told me at the I hotel missed, I, he I might have had sunstroke. Yeah, well, well, we're going on a bit with this, I think. Oh, yeah, go on, have, Jack. Yeah. What's he talking about, Jack? A few words have been mentioned during this week. He's doing the Essendon team, Jack. Leave me alone. Oh, I've got a headache. I'm going home in a minute. Ron Brophy was the umpire. He told me at the pub that he might have had sunstroke. He's been sent to the bush. He's gone up. He's gone up to... The coach yeah, he grong, grong, the grong, grong Matong. <laughs> yeah, and of course the bomber players were oh. in the clouds. And I must say this, a fellow came into the motel the other day, they, they were three golfers from Menangatang. Oh, and they said, tell that little Lewis that we have a very good team at Menangatang. Menangatang. Yeah. Hey, Shelton has uh, got a bad shower claim. What's that from knocking people? people? <laughs> and from knocking people got out, Jack. Jack. Hey, the time and Jack finishes treble. reading the game, it'll be over, truly. <laughs> well... He's got plenty of time, Jack, because we're going to see highlights of the yeah. whole match this time. It's going to be fantastic, Jack. Ooh, You'll love it. To watch. 
Well, 105 points to 70, a pretty easy victory to Essendon, of course. Let's look at the big bomber poster there it goes. And that's a wonder they're not worried about that. That's yeah, too that's fearsome, Clu Jack, nowadays. Clu Klux Klan, then. Clu Klu Klu <laughs> <laughs> the Klu Klux Klan? Yeah, do they do? Does that mean over here? Yeah, right word it says now. I think you got them up the league. <laughs> oh, you think they've got them up the league? They're the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the good players... The good players uh, uh, for Essendon in that grand final, of course, were Samson, Fordham, Fraser and Gosper. And uh, what about the big name for St Kilda? Stewart, Bulldog, Neil and Sirakoski. He, he was the best centre player that's ever played football. Ian Who? Stewart. Ian Stewart. Was oh, he better than really? Bandy Hopkins, Yeah, the best centre player that's ever played. Oh, he knew. Ever. Alan LaFontaine. Brilliant. Brilliant, could take the big mark, Bob. But that's Who's this? Stuart. Stuart he's and you like him? Disposal? His disposal was absolutely Perth. magnificent. It was. He was a lot better than... Would he be better than Greg Williams? Oh, now, leave them alone, will you? He's got magic. One's got magic. The other was ability. Oh, magic Probably and Farmer's ability. doing all right at the moment, too, isn't he? Got a block of plats, <laughs> they tell me. <laughs> yeah, I like that. We are going back to some vintage <laughs> league teams in, in which you will find the quotes of the year. They're magnificent. Let's just look at them now. Just before Lewis gives his dissertation or his diatribe or speaks in tongues on the Hawthorne Football Club, there were some quotable quotes of the year. And the first one is, we will win the flag. Johnny Devine. Yes. <laughs> Collingwood will make the five. Lou Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got that one. Oh. We will improve in the second half of the season. Don, uh, Raymond, uh, Graham Jelly. Yeah, Graham. <laughs> Very good. Oh, didn't he take a lot? Well, I haven't seen him that much this year. <laughs> I I have resigned. Eggleston. Uh, Eggleston. Who? Eggleston. I have not resigned. <laughs> Dr. Eddleston. Eggleston again. <laughs> Two eggs. Dr. Eddleston has been fired. Bob Pritchard. <laughs> Richmond will play 11 games in Brisbane this season. Oh, oh, oh he's in yours, Jack. The old yachting man. We are not moving anywhere. <laughs> the little Aussie bat for Leon Wigard. <laughs> and bat. you can be best on the ground, but not help the team. And I'll order you off the ground, Mickey Moldhouse. And <laughs> <laughs> there they were. They are the ones for the season. And good luck to everyone that spoke them. Now, John Devine was definitely the best. Well, there you are, Charles Lux. Charles Lux again, looking a million dollars we were. Did you like those? You never handed your suit back. <laughs> I know. Well, I didn't do that. <laughs> what? You didn't do that, I didn't either. I had a bit of it for years. It Eve Saint Laurent. Oh, Eve Saint Laurent. Eve, got... Eve Saint Laurent. I've never handed it back. I don't wear side. it now. <laughs> oh. Anyway, let. I think we better go on to. Yes. And for St Kilda fans, we will be showing this. I think later on. But this one is 1969, and of course, your favourite team, Richmond. Richmond Jackson, and yes. Carlton. Well, yes. Richmond and Carlton. Oh, Carl, yeah. you're doing Carlton. Okay, there's no uh, change to the side that beat Collingwood by six goals in the second semi, and of course, uh, there's a new 19th and 20th men. The Blues in, have included 26-year-old Ian Collins, who's now oh, the uh, big it's deal a for beauty. Beauty. They're Ian all Collins. in it. No wonder you big. I never thought he'd kick on like this. <laughs> <laughs> and how's that bloke Teddy Hopkins? He does that show with uh, uh, Randall McDonald. Uh, Randall McDonald. Oh, yeah. hey. well, isn't he clever? He's dude. got a computer there. He works there. <laughs> yeah. A computer. They've got one at Geelong now. A computer. Yeah. That if a, if one of the players in the opposition team gets six possessions in a quarter, yeah. Catherine wheels go off. Rockets oh. go up. It tells everybody in the in the little operator. He sends a smoke signal to next door. The fella next door lets a pigeon go. It goes to the selectors <laughs> in the next room. And they say, good heavens, we better change the team. No it's wonder they marvel. can't win oh, a game. Yeah. Bob, the Tigers have made no change. In the no side change. Of, no Jack. change in the side to beat Collingwood. 26 points in the prelim final. Yeah. Rex Hunt and Graham Bond are 19th and 20th. Uh, Rex Hunt is 19th <laughs> man, is he? <laughs> Right, you finished? Are you finished? Are Stephen Phillips? Are you finished? Richmond is going to become the first side to win from fourth spot since Essendon in 1965. And incidentally, uh, a bit of news for you people that go yeah. to see this match. Uh, Barassi gave uh, Croswell some goal-kicking practice. <laughs> and, and not only that, I believe you tip Richmond because they've got the best wings of all time. That's right in Clay and Burke, and I still say it was the best centre line. And did they win or not? They've got, the guardian, they've got the guardian angle here. <laughs> it's a guardian angel, Jack. Who did that trip? There's five coaches in those teams, you know. Yep. 
Five, five coaches. coaches there. You wouldn't believe it. Oh, well, nearly everyone that played with Richmond was a coach in the finish. Jeez, they all they kicked had such on. a good Ross side. kicked on, and so does Ian Collins. In, in, in. I'm the only one to stop it. <laughs> and Rex Hunt. <laughs> What does he coach? I don't know what he does. I'm not talking about himself. He's talking about someone else. He reminds me of himself. One thing about him, he's modest. He had last word with an echo about himself, truly. <laughs> you're, 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 hey, oh, you're, you're dirty. No, I'm not. I like Rally. He's a good bloke. You like him? Yeah, he's a good bloke. <laughs> For an ex copper. Who? Which one of you two? Sorry, Jack. <laughs> oh, Jack's still looking for those handcuffs he lost over in Yeah, Australia. listen, what about the... 1930s. When Jack left the police force, he knocked off a truncheon, a pair of handcuffs, <laughs> and what, what else was it? A, a police badge and a bike. <laughs> and that's what uh, Mick Miller said to me. He said, no, I said, what sort of police was Jack? He said, he was good, but he was a thief. <laughs> I said, why is that? He said, Mick said he's still got the handcuffs, the truncheon, and the bike he knocked off when he resigned. <laughs> Mick, he wouldn't say that. Mick did yeah, say he it. never said that. He's a lovely fellow. He is a good bloke, Mick. Yeah, he was. He Great one of the greatest we've ever had in the police force. I yeah. should have more of him. Good, thank you. Well, well yeah, Mick, <laughs> we have a look at the last quarter. Would that be dentist, possible? Jack. The 1969 <laughs> grand final between Richmond and Carlton. Now, Jack, look, Tommy Hafey, another premiership oh. by 25 oh, points. He won't, must have been a good player. Oh, I must have been. And the best players, Michael Green, Bowden, Bartlett. And for uh, Carlton, of course, Brian Quirk. He was a good player. And that Crane, he always played well in the they're finals. They're the same place. Look, they're the Tigers, Jack. There they, they are. Uh, can they play? <laughs> can they play? How many premierships <coughs> did you play in, Jack? Good God. I'm now, how many? Run, you had a, I was the best runner-up in the caper. The uh, best runner-up? Runner yeah, five I played in. <coughs> five runner-up? Five, five runner-ups. Didn't I you ever play in a premiership side? I coached one. I played in one in 1934. Well, you Beautiful. played in one. Brilliant side. That side was the best side ever strode the turf. Have you got it here? That ever 19... strode the turf. Ever strode the turf? What about 43, Jack? 40, oh, they were a battling side, but we won it. But, you, but you, what were you then? Were you just the non-playing? I was non a captain. Captain oh, coach. Captain, captain and coach. coach. Yes, I kicked seven goals in the first quarter and went centre half back and kicked another four in the last quarter. <laughs> How <laughs> about that? How's about that? Beat that, you fellas. Be a digging. <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that's telling lies. That would go on the record. Bush, Bush, that was right. And Brooks Broadstock was out of the races. Hey, and Jackie went, Broadstock. He said, when I knew I to, when you when I knew you'd kick seven goals, you wouldn't lose the lead there. And I went in and got three to one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's definitely gone. gone. He's definitely gone. Yeah, he, back to, quickly, he was rubbed out, of course. <laughs> he was rubbed out. He was rubbed out. He didn't time. even go. No, I never went. No, he but he the race races. Races better. Couldn't stand what, a bit. What sort of a disciplinarian were you? Very well, strict. No good ever him there, was it? Looking at him or something like that? No, you go you've got to be a little bit uh, considerate to players, haven't you, Jack, when oh, you can? Oh, yes. Jack said, go to the race, enjoy yourself. Just quickly. That story about when you were going very bad and you drugged them all into the room, put them all in the room, and you said, we're going back to basics. Basics, yeah. This and you got the football. Now, what did you say, Jack? <laughs> I said, this is a Sharon football. And yeah. a good look at it. Yeah. And that's the thing you've got to get to kick it. And what did one of the players <laughs> say? <laughs> he said, I didn't know that the first time I heard that. <laughs> No, he said, would you mind starting a game, Kate? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, did you hear about Quasimodo, the hunchback of Notre Dame? No. Came home from work after a hard day's work in the bell tower. Yeah. When he walks in the kitchen, there's his wife heating up a wok, you know, a Chinese wok on the stove. A he said, you beauty, Chinese food for dinner tonight. She said, I'm just going to iron you a couple of shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do a recipe on Oh, right, a quick one. Quick now, one. look, most people love spaghetti, but you've got to have the right sauce for, and you've got to have good spaghetti sauce. That's what you do. Yeah. One cup of chopped onion, one large clove, garlic clove, of course, crust, two tablespoons of oil, one pound of minced steak, one tablespoon of tomato paste, one can of uh, tomatoes, one teaspoon of salt, good pinch of pepper, half a teaspoon of chilli powder, and a quarter teaspoon of oregano. Oregano. Oh, so, OK, you brown flavor. the onion and garlic and oil, add the meat and tomato paste, and stir until the uh, meat cut changes colour. Add the undrained tomatoes uh, and seasoning, that's the yeah, pepper and salt. Red, Cover yeah. and simmer for 30 minutes. Recover, uh, remove the lid and cook a further 30 minutes or until the sauce is of good consistency. Yeah. Makes enough sauce for four and it is absolutely sensational. If you can't remember that, that's too bad because I'm not going to send you a recipe. Well, not yeah. only that. We you know what happens with that. 
Right. You just throw it out, go down to the supermarket yeah. and buy a big one of Paul Newman and, get some and dip of the it chips. on afterwards. You would need he that in a fit. Oh, no, he wants to stick the chips, I think. Fish and chips, <laughs> that's about <laughs> his caper, Jack. <laughs> For all I'm those long-waiting St Kilda fans, we come to 1966. St Kilda and Collingwood. Oh, we're another loss for Collingwood. <laughs> what are you just picking all the Collingwood losses there or something? <laughs> Collingwood. They must have been going couple bad. A couple changes they made at Collingwood. Well, Collingwood get on with into the team. side comes Laurie Hill and uh, on the half-back flank. And, of course, Errol Hutchinson is now a director of the Collingwood Football Club. Well, he's another one that's kicked off. Oh, well, he's a director there at Collingwood. And Len Clark and Barry Price are out of the team. That's bad luck for Barry. That means McKenna won't get a goal. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't playing. Oh, he wasn't playing. That's why he didn't kick. And we've got uh, young Searle playing at full force. Oh, good old Searle. Went to Fitzroy and became coach yeah. of the reserves there. And uh, Graham's full forward. Of course, yeah. Searle played centre forward. Which one of the Roses is that? That'll be Kevin. Kevin, Kevin Rose. He, he gave good service to Collingwood. And, and which one of the Richardsons? That'd be uh, Wayne. Well, he's a multi-millionaire now, isn't he? He's done very well. Yeah. Good bloke, too. Is he on the committee down he's there? He's a director at Collingwood, Wayne Richardson. Got... Everyone's a director <laughs> at Collingwood, Jack. <laughs> I got some uh, news for you. My Have brother's you? chairman of Selection. Still no change. Is Ronnie Same still line up. Just a minute, Jack. I'm ready for action. Just a minute. Now, Ronnie. He's chairman of Selectors. How he's, long has he been He's there? the brains behind Lee Matthews. Is he? Does he do the dry cleaning at their He hey, does the dry cleaning. Oh, is me a hot worker? <laughs> he does it at Channel 9. He does the AFL. He does... <laughs> is there anything he doesn't do? Just, just to close it up. And the Herald Weekly you, Times. St Kilda, no change. Did I tell you that? No, no changes. And they're yet. ready for action. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, so uh, another freemium, another defeat, another defeat. What about Tuddy? Up. Will Tuddy get any goals this week? Uh, well, I'm just going to look at it. See. <laughs> well, the John Henderson and Trevor Steer were captain and vice-captain at uh, respective... Yeah, but it's one above year. that. I oh, know, was it? Uh, yeah, Tuddy, uh, he kicked seven goals that match. Don't you remember that? He oh, played he a fantastic game. And that takes a bit of doing, kicking seven goals in a semi final. And who did you select that game? Well, I, uh, <laughs> did, I thought Collingwood would win by Not a point. Again. And, uh, but they, uh, <laughs> Not that's again. just my bad luck, they lost by a point. And what you had some advice more than a teenage bride. I what had more that? advice than a teenage bride on a wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> that's a beauty, you made that up. <laughs> Uh, Tom Fry rated it. Everyone has pleaded with me to tips and kill it. I'm going for the pies. Why? More advice than a teenage bride on her wedding night. Yeah. Oh, that's what would nice. you give her? I don't know what I'd give her. <laughs> <laughs> teenage bride. Can you remember your wedding night? <coughs> I most certainly can. Did you have champagne, you and Margaret? Yes. At Craig's Hotel. What about Ooh, you, Jack? You wouldn't remember that that far, would you? Would you going have... back a bit too far. <laughs> Jack had a bottle of Foster's. <laughs> well, we'd better have a look at the <laughs> final quarter for all those... Well, for any football fan, because it was a magnificent game, a magnificent result, and gave St Kilda something to Ooh, crow about yeah. for years a and most years. most thrilling game. Oh, thrilling game, thrilling Jack. Game. When Who the was the fellow that kicked the last point, Jack, before we see it? I can't. I haven't got that news for you, Bob, at this stage. Oh, I because you haven't a, seen it, Jack. Uh, who was that? Yeah. B Barry, Barry Breen. Breen. Yes, big Barry Breen. Now, he's he kicked on. He's a boss of Tasmania. Oh, he's a good bloke, Barry, too. He but how'd he kick that point? Another <laughs> 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 point still see it. Oh, oh. we have bad luck. Four <laughs> points, a point. And then that bloke, what's his name, uh, uh, Harms, knocks the ball back into the plane. Who does he hit in the chest with a knock back to Sheldon and kicks the goal? <laughs> By rights, uh, uh, Harms should have let it go out of bounds if he was playing hey, football properly. He, he was a good player. The one the Green that kicked that, he played Barry, three hundred. He was games. the best player I've seen since Lowry, a better player than Lowry Nash at centre forward. <laughs> Barry Green. Don't Barry. keep picking up. <laughs> I think we better look at yeah. the final quarter of 1966. Well, Lewis, I want you to read the final score. Oh, again with look at that, 73 to 74. And I guess who's lost by a point? <laughs> Coming with a game. And I'd the, like to know the bloke who's putting these the game must side. be a saddest. Is he a one? Well, the best players yeah. for uh, St Kilda were Cooper, Stewart, Sirikoski and Griffiths. And Breen will give him a mention. Yeah. And for uh, Collingwood, their good players included Waters, Richardson, Thompson, Patterson and Pitt. There we go, look. What a sign. For, look, St Kilda, it's magnificent. I wonder if Stanley Ells is watching that tonight. I bet he is. I bet he's hoping he could play as well. <laughs> he's not having much trouble down there at all, Stan, is he? Well, it's like walking into a, into a typhoon, isn't it? Well, How do they get into trouble, St Kilda? Oh, God. Yeah, no, get into trouble. Oh. Yeah, would you, you like to come hey, back and coach them, Jack? 
Oh, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. You'd have to do something, Bob, and I wouldn't know what to do. At any rate, Jack, you can thank Mel Brown. He saved your club. Mel Brown saved Richmond this year. And I said to Jack, what's of a bloke as Mel Brown? And he said he'd start a fight in an empty house. Well, now, to all you lovely video viewers out there, you can now press, uh, press, <laughs> press the oh, rewind button and look at it all over again. You don't drink and either. not only that, if you watch it many times and tell your friends to buy this video, guess what? You'll all finish up in the lunatic asylum. <laughs> you may even see more vintage lean teeth. Of every decade, we're going to drag out some film of a box brownie that Jack took in <laughs> 1932 when he was It's playing. still alive. And <laughs> our final word is... But can I say this to you? Now, we're going home to my place to stay. Yes. And I want you to come. We're going to the pancake parlour and get... What sort of pancakes will we have? Oh, ones with big apple on them. Uh, yeah, Beautiful. and cream. And, and we'll cream. take one home to Edna. She can have it in bed when yeah. we sit there. <laughs> That'll be the only thrill she'll have for the week. <laughs> <laughs> then there's no doubt we just want to say beware of imitations of this program, especially... <laughs> On other channels. And you've forgotten one thing? <laughs> what is it? Charles Lux, Charles, Charles Lux, Lux, Charles Lux. <laughs> and we will say farewell to you and just hope that you've enjoyed the program as much as this undoubtable trio of talent have had in bringing it to you. Away farewell. Farewell. Au revoir. Farewell. Can you say something? <laughs>